is the 28th episode of Crop Folks Weekly for the third week of 2011. This episode is titled Carrier Wars. Crop Folks Weekly is sponsored by Arcus, Coffee Meet Experts. I'm your host, Jason Atwood, and joining me, my co host, for now and forever, till podcast do we part, it's Justin. Justin, how you doing? That was cute. Wasn't that? Yeah. I made that up. Did you? Yes, I did. So we have a big, big uh, agenda today. We're glad to get through. We're going to talk about a new post that we posted uh, from our other founder, who he should not be named, Larry, who posted a blog post about his experience on the new, or moving from Verizon to, to AT&T, and now that Verizon has a Verizon iPhone, we're going to talk about a little bit what that, pros and cons, and why you would or would not switch. We'll try to figure out a way to make it cloudy. Don't know. Get an article about social CRM and how whether that's set to take off this year. We we'll also have some Amazon purchases. Amazon's purchasing some competitors and might make us might be trying to make a splash in the United States with, with a European offering. And Zoho launches a competitor to uh, to an Intuit property that we're gonna talk about. And we'll make our quad focus at picks of the weeks or week. So why don't you start us off with uh, the blog post by Larry and tell us a little bit what he was talking about. Sure. So Larry wrote a post, although, you know, he's not to be named, but we keep naming him. Uh, he wrote a post. It's not his real name. <clears throat> it's fake. iPhone, the Clone Wars. So Larry recently moved over from Verizon to AT&T for the sole purpose of getting an iPhone. Right. He wanted an iPhone. He was on Verizon. He had a droid. I don't think he was too pleased with the droid that he had. I don't think he liked it that much. It's tough when you're surrounded by a bunch of iPhone users to like anything other than the yeah, iPhone. Yeah, so he moved to the iPhone and has been on it now for, you know, maybe five, six months or so and, and has liked it. Uh, so he wrote a post about, you know, what it what it's like to have moved from Verizon to AT&T, his experience as well as with the announcement of the new Verizon iPhone, where there might be some advantages or disadvantages or or where you might decide to, ha had you had switched like he did, would you go back to Verizon now that you're on AT&T? So he wrote a little bit about, you know, no new features. It, it, you know, based on the press release, the, the actual features are really not too much different. I think they made some changes to the outer rim of the phone, if you will, the, the antenna, so that when you actually touch it, it doesn't lose reception. Yeah. Um, you know, there's obviously differences in the networks, right? The, the actual cellular radio networks that could cause some differences, like AT&T allows you to go between using the phone and data. So if you're on the phone, you can check your email right Simulta simultaneously attack the, the or use the data network as well as phone which uh, Verizon does not allow does you not to do. allow so the new Verizon iPhone won't allow you to do some of the things that the AT&T phone allows you to do but but allows you to do one other thing allows that you does, to do some interesting yeah things. so I think there's there's really two it's really one plus one minus the minus is that if you just throw away the carriers right throw away their perception everybody's experience is different I've had a million different. I've had Sprint, T-Mobile, Singular, AT and T. I've had Verizon. I have never gone to one and thought, "Wow, this is ten times better than the other." And I've never left one and thought, you know, I've never had it. They all drop calls. They all have areas. Certainly, in a certain building, you'll find that one might outperform the other. But it's not like I don't know. I've just never been driving down the street and thought, "Oh, look, my Verizon's getting, but my AT and T isn't." So I think there's two two things to look at. One is that you, you can't do the simultaneous, which actually would be a major stop for me because I do that all the time. I'm on the phone and I'm talking to someone and checking email or doing something else while I'm on the phone with them. That is surfing. I think that's a, it's a great feature. So well, yeah, if, you're, if you have your headset on and you're talking to someone on the phone and they say, and you have to go to the Google map, well, that's, that's a good feature, right? You can't do that now with 
or you wouldn't be able to do that on the Verizon. You phone. would if you had if you had Wi-Fi, just not if you want to right. use a cellular network for both the vo voice and data. So that's one. But the other thing is a feature they put into the new OS, the new operating system, and Verizon is going to support it. Now, wait. So this is sort of a wait to see what happens with AT and T, which is that they're allowing for the iPhone, which is something we've all been waiting for, which is the iPhone can now be a Wi-Fi hotspot. So like Verizon sells the MiFi that we have, and, and Sprint sells them same one, we have that one too. We like to have backups. You can use it as a hotspot for multiple devices to attach to. And this is different from iPhone tethering, which allows you to use a Bluetooth connection to connect your, your computer to your iPhone. This allows anything that thinks that can connect to Wi-Fi, like an iPad, connect to your iPhone to use it as a data. So, but that's a choice made by the carrier. It, well, it's two things. One is it's in the new operating system, 4.3. Which is, but again, that that's, put it in. that's a choice that Verizon is making, right? That AT and T has decided. No, we don't know. Or it, the, ah, remember, the operating exist. system isn't out yet. We don't all have it. We don't have the operating system, gotcha. so we can't tell whether AT and T is gonna. I, here's the end of it. If you're on Verizon and you have the chance to get an upgrade to a phone, fine. I, I would suggest anybody who isn't just who hasn't been just salivating at the bit for six months or a year or two years. The only thing I would say to keep me away is that what's happening in June and what are they releasing in the iPhone 5? Okay, there will be an iPhone 5. It will be in June, July time frame. It will have new features and it will come out on both carriers simultaneously. I guarantee it because they just announced that AT&T has now re-signed up with Apple, but it's not, a, it's not an exclusive agreement. So to me, you go from February to June and I'm always a guy who likes to have the hot ticket item, right, the new tech. So if I went and got the Verizon iPhone for two hundred dollars, and then I had to pay another six hundred dollars in June, I'd be mad. So that'd be my concern about moving from one to the other. But again, if you're someone who's waiting, or you know you're you don't really care, you just want the iPhone four, and you have Verizon, go for it. You know, I think for us AT and T people, it's more of a wait and see. Let's wait till people get their hands on it, and to see if it's really that much better. Stand side by side with them in a place and go, how's your connection versus mine? Um, so that's that's interesting, you know. It's 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 certainly a long time coming. So, um, but so we'll also go to uh, the next article, which was on Rewrite Web. Great transition. Yeah, it was a uh, Segui. Yeah. Uh, which is actually about interesting because it's on Rewrite Web, but it was about a uh, survey that Sugar CRM, a competitor to uh, Salesforce, uh, released about social CRM and whether CRM whether people are integrating social not features but social profiles into their CRM um, which is you know we talk a little bit about when we talk about chatter Salesforce chatter we usually say it's integrating social features into your CRM this is integrating the profile information and they're saying that 26% 26, 26 of them have already done it 72% um, plan to do it soon, if not this year. You know, I think it's an interesting take on what people consider, CR, you know, customer relationship management. Is your social profile, your Twitter, your Facebook, is that part of your relationship strategy, I guess? Uh, from two different angles. From the angle of a consumer or somebody where I would be the client, I don't want this. I don't I don't want my Facebook or my Twitter to be to become like television with commercials, right? I, I don't want to be like having fun with my friends and then all of a sudden there's a break because there's a commercial from some company that knows me but not really, right? That was sort of an odd analogy, but I, I, I feel like that's like stay away from me, our relationship doesn't exist here our relationship exists elsewhere and I don't want it to exist here so don't don't bother me here because this is where I hang out with my friends on the other hand as a company who sells stuff to people um, I I would you know I relish the idea of being able to uh, interact or, or um, communicate with my clients or at least monitor what they're thinking 
in different in different areas. Wait, I'm sorry, you're monitoring what they're thinking. Well, sort of. Yeah, I mean, if if you're looking at their Twitter feed and you could see what they're talking about, if they mention your product or your service, you'd want to know that, right? You, if they're if they're popping off about how crappy your service is on Twitter, and they're your client, you're gonna want to know that as opposed to not knowing that. Yeah, I think that I think that this is where. This is where the concept of having social, uh, different profiles, different social profiles becomes really important. I don't mind if you integrate my professional profile. I have professional profiles. I have a Twitter account, Jason M. Atwood. Uh, I have a, a LinkedIn account. And these are professional. I use them professionally. And so if you want to put in your CRM what I'm tweeting on my professional account or what I'm doing on LinkedIn, fine. Because that's it's out there for the world. It's, it is a, you know, in some ways, it is what it is. It's a microblog of of things that I'm doing, and I and I cater what I'm saying in a professional voice. Facebook is different because Facebook is not an open network. It's a closed network. It's an invitation only network. I lock Facebook down as tight as I possibly can. Friends only, you know. And I get rid of people all the time who I think are just kind of fringe friends. Your fringe friend, you're gone. Because I want to think when I put up a picture of something that is, you know, kind of funny but not, you know, not something I want to see on the evening news that it's only going to a couple hundred people, not a couple thousand. So you don't have a couple hundred friends. I have a hundred and I, my goal is to always keep it under 200. So one in one out policy with me now. <laughs> um, so, you know, I, I think it's I don't mind it that they and we do it. I mean, we certainly capture we added fields in our in our Salesforce to capture LinkedIn to capture Facebook and capture Twitter on accounts, right? So if one of our clients has a Twitter account, sure, I want to capture that because I, I might want to go see what they're saying. You know, we monitor Twitter in some ways. We don't do it in a very automated fashion, but it's certainly it's certainly something I'm interested in. I, I don't know. I, I think it's you know it's it's not it doesn't bother me as long as it's the right profile. And again, I think the idea of privacy is something that we're all just going to have to get our heads around that privacy doesn't mean what it meant anymore. You know, privacy. It's like Google. It's like Google now. If you go Google a product, right, and go from Google to that website, why is it that anywhere you go for the next next three weeks, you see nothing but ads for that product, because they're tracking where you went and what you did, and then they're pushing ads exactly to you based on what you saw. I went to look for lamps the other day, and now every website I go to is putting lamps. The same lamp store that I bought the lamp from is putting ads in my face from the same lamp store. Not before I bought the lamp, but after I bought the lamp. I love so, lamp. So it's just, it's an odd one. I, I don't care. I think it'll be interesting. You'll see where the privacy stuff goes. And then it goes, how many, you know, again, how many copies of me and my social stuff is out there? In other news, was that better? That was, that was good. <laughs> Amazon uh, acquires Love Film, or I guess acquired the rest of Love Film, which is a Netflix competitor in Europe. Yep. And uh, so why don't you tell us a little about it? Well, they Love Film does online DVDs and game rentals, and they stream movies and TV shows over the internet, so very much like Netflix. Uh, but they operate in the UK, Germany, Sweden, Norway, and Denmark, and they are essentially the biggest um, service of their kind over in Europe. So Amazon sort of jumped ahead of uh, of Netflix here, trying to uh, either not really block, but sort of be ahead of the game as Netflix would potentially try and expand their operation beyond uh, just the U.S., right? Um, so, so Amazon goes ahead and, and now has this service that they can operate in in Europe, and they already owned like forty two percent of it. So you know, now they just own the rest of it. Um, interesting enough, you know, Amazon gets into the whole online streaming. I I love Netflix streaming. I I wish that they would just have more stuff that I can stream. Basically Absolutely. everything more and faster. And it it brings me to almost want to get a Hulu subscription because Hulu has all the stuff that we want. Right, all the new stuff. I want to watch new stuff. It's great catching up, and you know we've been talking about it. A little personal note: I've been catching up with The Office. I watched like season one four years ago on Netflix, and now I, the wife and I have been watching every episode streaming 
literally every night. We just watch The Office for like four hours or whatever, three hours. We watch like episode after episode, streaming on the Apple TV, the new one, and then maybe you know take it on the iPad somewhere else. It is great. It's a it great service. Pretty great. But, but we're at the end of we're at the end of season six, and they, Netflix no did start. There are some seasons of some television shows that they are streaming immediately. Like they have them immediately, like the day after they air. I'm not sure which ones they are. I've come across a few and said, "Oh, that's interesting. That was just on last night. Odd." But why can't I watch Dexter season three? Right. Like, why do I have to get the DVDs for that? And the reason is because they want to make money on the DVDs. They want people. They want to put out Dexter season three on DVD. Let all the people who buy DVDs anymore don't know who they are. Uh, yeah, go, they're up to like season five. I mean, it's like they, they it's want like, a delay, and then they want it to go to then they want it to go to iTunes so people can purchase it. So they I want to get they, they have they have seasons from like the nineties that I want to watch and stream, but you can't. You have to get the DVDs, which I think is just at that point, just give it up, it, just stream it. Clearly, the end of physical media. We've talked about this a lot. Is coming. But there's a lot of people who are going to fight it. Just like the music industry, you know, and CDs, they fought that for a good amount of time. I don't think at any point, anybody at this point thinks that CDs is the way of the future. Nobody's going back to, to media when it comes to physical media, when it comes to music anymore. Actually, people are buying records nowadays. Yeah, those, yes, and people still buy laser discs. No. <laughs> yes, they do. There are people who have huge laser and love it and still say it's the best format ever. No. Kooks. Moving on. People do buy records, though, now. Records yes. are making a comeback because no. they come with free downloads. You may as well buy the record. You get the free download. Now you have the record and the download. A comeback. Give me the percentage of people who are buying. I will give you that percentage. I will plot it on a chart it's for you. under 2%. Come and back. the last piece of news is Zoho, which yep. is a online service provider, software service provider who does a lot of different applications. They are what Google Apps should be. In some ways, yes, they have. They have done. They have CRM apps. They have drawing apps. They have writing apps. They have uh, sheets. They have sheets, like a, databases. They and they now all. they just added a one called Books, which is a a competitor to QuickBooks. So a online account management um, financial application, which I think is really interesting because QuickBooks offline is probably one of the most popular. It's so cheap. You can. You know, download it, install it on Windows, Mac, PC, whatever, and everybody uses it because it's cheap and easy. QuickBooks Online is a piece of junk. It's just junky. It just, I've tried to use it. It does not work. It's not fast. It, it has all sorts of browser browser issues, like it needs to use this only type of browser. It is crap. I know people like FreshBooks have been trying to sort of take away that idea from them by saying, listen, why do you need to do all this accounting in in QuickBooks, just use your invoicing, and we'll keep track of all that. Well, this one's interesting that's what, because that's that's actually a very interesting piece of this product is that it is part of a suite that integrates with Zoho CRM and invoicing. So you have a full sort of suite of CRM invoice accounting, and it also does integrate with QuickBooks. So you can like do the lightweight stuff online and then have it come down to QuickBooks to do some more heavyweight. I mean, I'm not sure why you might have to do that, but maybe you maybe you have to or or I don't know. Some some for some apparent reason maybe it doesn't give all the features that QuickBooks has in it. So you can get the data down into QuickBooks in a format that QuickBooks likes. Um, they have the ability to uh, share out to uh, an accountant. Which is which is a pretty nice feature, QuickBooks right? QuickBooks Online could do that as well. You can give another license to your account, yeah. right? And they have, you know, I think I think they're doing twenty four dollars a month for two users, and then five dollars a month for each additional user above two. That's pretty uh, good. So it's the pricing. I mean, it, it it sort of fills out their suite of applications. So you know, you have word word documents and Excel spreadsheets. They have, they have a whole they have everything up there. A, I'm sorry, and they even have a whole email productivity suite. So task calendaring, email. They they do a lot. It, it's a very interesting suite. They I, I feel like they haven't made any huge inroads in terms of user base. Well, I know I know of uh, of uh, a buddy of mine. He he wrote a web app that uses Zoho's database as as sort of the the backend database. Uh, he wrote uh, a web app. 
PHP and and pulls all the data from from a Zoho database. He said, and all the reporting tools that he offered up on the on the app are right out of Zoho. So it's pretty interesting. I think what this what this makes me yearn for is someone to build a low cost. Talking to you, financial force, a low cost QuickBooks competitor that. Because QuickBooks is a couple hundred dollars, this is twenty four dollars a month, right? So we're talking, you know, times twelve or times ten. You know, we're talking five hundred bucks a year kind of thing. Financial Force, a full accounting package, is ten times that in terms of pricing. So it's very expensive. So the, the jump between a couple hundred bucks and thousands of dollars is is huge. I would love to see a very good integrated Salesforce. Salesforce, like Financial Force Lite, something that could do most of it or some of it, integrate in Salesforce, use the power of the, the, the platform, fully integrated, but not be a massive accounting package that I need to go learn, uh, either need to spend that kind of money or I need to go uh, build out. Because a lot of people, including nonprofits that we work with, are always saying, oh, we use QuickBooks, I wish there was something online we could use, then they end up looking at something like NetSuite, but NetSuite isn't very cheap either. So I think there's a, it's ripe for a great Salesforce driven low cost. So on the in this tune, the twenty four thirty dollars a month thing. And that's it for the news of the week. We can go on and make our cloud focused app pick of the week. I'll start off with you. And what do you got for us? I since we uh, have been talking about the iPhone, I decided to choose one of my favorite iPhone apps that has some cloud uh, tie-in because it, it pulls data down and streams media. So, you know, iPhone, we were talking about streaming media. I thought this would play in nicely. My favorite iPhone app that I use every single day is the ESPN Radio mobile app for the iPhone. I believe they have it for BlackBerry and Droid, or Android, but I have an iPhone. Uh, Verizon the, iPhone? I don't have a Verizon iPhone because they don't have that just yet. Uh, so the ESPN radio iPhone app allows you to listen live to ESPN radio stations, um, the national one and all the, a bunch of different local ones, I think 15 different local stations. So here in New York, it's 1050 ESPN. You can change between stations. That's nice. But my favorite feature is the fact that you can grab every single podcast that ESPN produces and they produce a lot of content we're obviously podcast people we do our own podcast so obviously we listen to them as well I listen to four or five different ESPN podcasts that they produce and I have them in a favorites list and I can just go and it doesn't even download them it just you know streams them down off the web you can play them in the background it'll open up a safari window and sort of download them in advance so if you're going into the subway you don't have to worry about it because uh, it sort of buffers and downloads itself in advance. Uh, you can listen to uh, an on-demand sports center that sort of refreshes itself every 20 minutes. It's pretty decent. Uh, and they, they have a little, um, a little scroll on the bottom that, that's sort of like the bottom line on ESPN that scrolls the scores and stuff for you. Um, all in all, I think it's a, a phenomenal app for $2.99. Uh, one of the best purchases I've made on the iPhone. Nice. Yeah, it's a great app for two ninety nine. It it shows off the power of, you know, being a, a a big time content provider and just having another avenue to get your content out there in a really interesting way. Are there commercials in the podcast and in the app? There are. Well, the the podcasts themselves are sponsored, like. So they're that So they have some, you know, brought they'll to be you on by. the. Well, yeah, either brought to you by or you know, I I, I listen to Pardon the Interruption, the big, the, their television show, and it's you know, since it's a TV show that they just podcast right, as they just take the audio and put it out as a podcast. I mean, they have logical commercial breaks, and sometimes they'll have like a five second little thing like, you know listen to this other podcast or something like that but other than that no there's not really a whole lot of commercials yeah it just i'm always interested when someone 
because all those podcasts are available on iTunes. Totally, you could go to free. iTunes and grab them. Right. And no, well, the podcasts themselves are still free. It's just the app is two ninety nine, which allows you to jump and get to them very easily and not have to sync down from your iTunes and and the whole thing. Yeah, it's just interesting because again, you can. You can basically subscribe to any podcast for free. It shows up in your iPhone. You can click get but it more doesn't. episodes. You can click get more episodes from your iPhone. You can download the newest one on the fly and listen to it. Only if you're in a Wi-Fi spot. You can't download them. I mean, you can do all this stuff, but it's a lot of jumping yeah. around as I, opposed to hopping into one app. The only thing I find interesting is that when you charge money for an app that is supporting a brand and then has commercials in it. So it's like that always makes me like, well, I don't get it. Why am I paying two ninety nine? I think it's a great app. If it were free, I'd buy it. All right, I download it a second because great. Then I'm listening to your content more. You're making me listen. But why are you charging me to listen to your ad driven content? This seems kind of seems kind of odd. Anyway, mine's gonna blow your mind. All right. Because I'm picking a Microsoft product. Good for you. I am picking. I am picking. Microsoft actually released a new application for the iPhone. It's their first. Segue other than search when they released Bing into sort of an application for the iPhone. So, and this is truly cloud computing because it is a cloud syncing note app called OneNote. I have downloaded it and I have tried to log into it, but because it requires a, a Microsoft login, and I, at that point I couldn't remember the last time I logged into my Microsoft whatever account. They've changed it. It used to be called Passport, I think, and now it's called something else. But I've read over the reviews and things. And basically, it is a note application that then syncs your notes back and forth and to your Windows computer, if you have one, so you have your Windows notes, and through the cloud to their, I think they call it Cloud Files. I'm trying to think of the name of what the one that they call their online thing. Oh. I could probably look it up, and I should probably know it. You should probably know it. I, I don't know what the name of their online, like, is this like their edition of like the the Google Disk, like that, that kind yes. of thing? Yes, and and you can put files up there. It syncs to office.live.com, so you can sync, you can access them up there. Anyway, I thought it was interesting because it's a it's a note syncing application. Interesting that that even Apple didn't release note syncing until very late in the game. It looks like basically a competitor to Evernote, right? Which is. I don't know why you'd want to use this over Evernote because Evernote is so awesome and has so many awesome well, abilities. It's been around it, it, free it's, it's OCR. Been around for a while, so it's fully baked at this point. But I like that uh, they're getting into the game and trying to think outside the box and going after a platform that they're you know a deep competitor to. So it's an iPhone and iPad app. It yeah, works on both. It works on both. It's not. It's not a universal. It's not app. universal. That's correct. Um, is it for just the iPhone and iPad? Does it work on an Android? Does it work on a BlackBerry? Does it work on a Windows phone? Well, I'm sure it works on the Windows phone Note. I don't know if they have the same app. I mean, it's an app, so they'd have to build the app for Android. I don't think they're building apps for Android. My guess is other than Bing, just because, again, Microsoft's pretty choosy where they go in and where they're picking their battles. This is their first sort of functional app that's n that is not search-related, not Bing-related, that is on the iPhone. Interesting. I guess if I were a big Windows user and I had a big, you know, a Windows Live user, and I were doing my notes there anyway, to the cloud. But I, and I had my Windows, and I, but I didn't want to have Windows Seven phone. This would be cool. This would be a cool, you know, a cool feature. You know what's a good notes app? Evernote, Google Wave. Oh, really? <laughs> I had to bring it in there at the end. <laughs> All right. Well, with that, that is a good way of segueing us out of this, of waving goodbye, Wave goodbye to this podcast by saying to everybody, uh, follow the podcast and the blog at blog.argusinc.com. You can subscribe by RSS, which is a great way, like using Google Reader, which would be a nice application. Uh, the company's at twitter.com slash Inc. And I'm at twitter.com slash Jason M. Atwood. And Justin here is at twitter.com slash Just Edelstein. We're on Facebook, facebook.com slash Inc. A R K U S I N C, where you can follow us or like us and get all updates to the podcasts and blogs as they come. We, we don't spam too much. And the best way to subscribe to the podcast, as always, is to go to iTunes, type in 
type in Cloud Focus Weekly in iTunes, subscribe, leave a great review, five star and above. We'd love to hear from you. Tweet us back if you want to hear anything else. If you like things, don't like things. If you want to make a Cloud Pick of the Week or tell us about something. I actually had a developer come to us the other day and said he wanted us to look at a application. It's in beta, so I said we couldn't make a pick of something that wasn't out yet. Mm. But uh, So that's, that's a possibility. And other than that, until next week, uh, enjoy those cloudy days. Thank you.